gardeners. I hope you guys are having a great day today. My name is Miss Schlor and I have been working with you on our phonics with foundations. Some of the things that you have done in your classroom before, but it is stuff that we kind of have to practice all year long so we don't forget any of that information so we can be ready to be first graders in the fall. So remember, we are always going to need a pencil and a piece of paper for our activities, but we won't need those things until the end of the video or maybe halfway through. So you have some time to go get those materials, but you might wanna just grab those materials every day if you're coming to these videos, because we're going to need them. Today, we're going to be working on some letters and sounds. I have some new letters for us today. We're going to work on sky writing and writing our letters with pencil and paper. And then we're going to work on writing some words. So yesterday we worked on reading words. Today we're going to work on writing the words. And those kind of go together because if you can read the words, then you can write the words. And if you can write the words, then you can read the words. So it's best if we practice both of them so we can become better readers and writers. Today, the first thing that we are going to do is I have our letters right here. Remember, I'm going to say the letters and the sounds. Then I'm going to point to you to tell you that it's your turn. Don't forget that I do some motions with these letters so you can copy those motions as I'm doing them and when you repeat after me. Our first letter is X box. Q, queen, qua. M, man, mmm. C, cat, k. P, pan, O, octopus, ah. U, up, ah. Uh. I, itch, I. A, apple, ah. E, ed, e. And that's the end of our letters today. I hope you guys were able to follow along and do some of those motions with me that um, I did for our letters. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to practice writing and sky writing the letters that we just did, the ones that were not vowels. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to sky write it and tell you, but I don't want you to do it with me yet. I just want you to listen first. So I'm gonna turn my body so you can see how I'm moving my arm. And the first letter that we are going to do is the letter C. So C starts on the plane line, point to the plane line, start to fly backwards and go down and around to the grass line. C, cat, Okay, hey, now I want you to take your pencil and paper and you are going to practice writing the letter with me. So I will do part of it and then I'll pause and then let you copy after me. And I want you to try to say the words as you are writing, just like Miss Schlor does. So remember, C starts on the plane line, start to fly backwards. Okay, now you do it and go down and around to the grass line. C, cat, k. Okay, there's our letter C. And the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our super straight arms. Remember, we don't want T-Rex arms because then it's hard to write. If I was going like this, it would be hard for you to see. So you're gonna have a super straight arm and you're gonna point at my board. So point to the plane line. Start to fly backwards and go down and around the grass line. C, cat, k. 
Awesome job, friends. I'm going to erase that letter C. And then we're going to move on to our next letter. And the next letter that we are going to do is the letter Q. And remember, when we're writing words with the letter Q, it has the Q-U together like this because they are best friends. And whenever we're reading and writing, Q and U are always together. For right now, we're just going to write the letter Q by itself without the letter U. So watch and listen first. <clears throat> Point to the plane line, trace back and go down to the grass line and around back up to the plane line. Trace back down to the worm line and point to his buddy, U. So I'm going to draw my letter U so you can see what it will look like when you are writing. And that way you can see that when we write the Q, his little tail is going to point to the letter U. Now we're going to do it together. So grab your pencil and you're going to repeat after me. I'll point to you when it's your turn. Point to the plane line. Trace back and down and around to the grass line. Go back up to the plane line. Trace back down to the worm line and point to the letter U. Okay, so hopefully you were able to write that letter Q. I'm going to make mine a little bit darker so we can see it better. There we go. It doesn't match exactly, but that's okay. So uh, we're going to take our super straight arms and we're going to say it together. So you're going to say it with me this time and you're going to point at my board. So point to the plane line, trace back down and around to the grass line, back up to the plane line and go down to the worm line and point to the letter U. Q, queen, qu. Okay, great job, my friends. I know the letter Q can kind of be tricky sometimes, so it doesn't have to be perfect, because remember, we're all still learning here. And even Mishlor doesn't write her letters correctly sometimes. Sometimes I have to go back and try it again, and that's okay. Our next letter that we're going to write is the letter P. Watch and listen first. Point to the plane line, go down to the worm line. Trace back up to the plane line and curve all the way around to the grass line. P, pan, p. Okay, my friends, get your pencil. We're going to repeat after me. Point to the plane line. Go down to the worm line. Trace back up to the plane line. And curve all the way around to the grass line. P, Pam, P. Awesome job. So there's our P. Remember, we're going to sky ride it with our super straight arms. Point to the plane line. Go down to the worm line. Trace back up to the plane line and go all the way around to the grass line. P, Pam, P. Okay, great job, my friends. I'm going to erase that letter P, and we are going to do uh, the next letter, which is the letter X. So watch first. Point to the plane line. Slide down to the grass line. Leave a space and point to the plane line. Slide back to the grass line. X, Fox, X. Okay, take your pencil, and you're going to repeat after me. Point to the plane line, slide down to the grass line. Point to the plane line and leave a space. Slide back to the grass line. X, box, X. Okay, take your super straight arms and let's sky ride it. Point to the plane line, slide to the grass line. Point to the plane line and leave a space. Slide back to the grass line. X, box, X. Okay, my friends, awesome job. We have one more letter to do. And our last letter is going to be the letter M for man. So you're going to watch me first. 
point to the plane line, go down to the grass line, trace back up to the plane line and make a hump. Then go back up to the plane line and make another hump. M, man, mmm. Okay, take your pencils and let's write it together. You're going to repeat after me. Point to the plane line, go down to the grass line. Trace back up to the plane line and make a hump. Trace back up to the plane line and make another hump. M, man, mmm. Great job, my friends. I'm going to erase that letter M and you're going to either need to grab another piece of paper or maybe you can flip it over and write on the back because we are going to practice writing some words. But before we do that, we are going to play a little game and this game is something we did last week and I'm going to say a sound and you're going to touch the part of your body that starts with that sound. So here we go. The first part of my body starts with the letter N. Mm. Starts with the sound N. Mm. What part of your body starts with the N mm sound? Okay, the part of my body that I was thinking of was my knees. My knees start with the N mm sound. Okay? The next part of my body starts with the e eh, eh sound. It starts with the e eh sound. Okay, the part of my body that I was thinking of was my e eh elbow. It starts with my e eh sound. We're going to do one more. The last letter or part of my body that I'm thinking of starts with the sound. It starts with the sound. Okay, the part of my body that I was thinking of were my feet. My feet start with the sound. Awesome job, my friends. I hope you were able to get up and touch the parts of your body that I was thinking of. So I'm going to say the word. You're going to tap it out with me, and then we're going to write the word on our board. So we're practicing stretching out and writing three-letter words. Our first word that we're going to tap out is gas. Gas. So elbows up. Remember, we want our hand by our head so we can see what we're doing. Let's tap it out. G -a -s. Gas. Let's tap it out one more time. G -a -s. Gas. Okay, now we are going to write it together. On the next ones, you're going to try and write it on your own. So we're going to use our hands still. So we want to have it up by our heads. And we're going to say the first sound. G. Hmm. What letter makes the G sound? The G makes the G sound. So we are going to write the letter G on our bird board first. G. Ah. Ooh, what letter makes the ah sound? Look down here. A makes the ah sound. So we're going to write the letter A next. G, ah, is our last sound. What letter makes the s sound? That's right, the letter S makes the s sound. And that is our last sound that we are going to write on there. So let's double check to make sure this sounds right. Remember, our word was gas. Let's tap it out. G, a, gas. That sounds good to me. That word says gas. Awesome job writing it, my friends. I'm going to take my eraser and erase that word. And the next word that we are going to tap out together is bad. So elbows up. B -a -d. Bad. Let's tap it out one more time. Elbows up. B -a -d. Bad. 
Okay, now I want you to try and write it on your own first. And I'm going to count down from 10. 10. Okay, it's okay if you're not finished yet. We are going to write it together and see if what you got on your paper is the same as mine. So our word was bad. Let's tap it out. B is our first sound. What letter makes the B sound? The B makes the B sound. So there's my B, B. Next sound is A, ah, B, A. Ah. B, A, D, D is our last sound. Okay, let's double check it. So let's tap it out together. B, A, D, bad. Ooh, that says bad. Were you able to write that too before we did it together? We are going to erase that word. And we are going to do one more word together that you are going to try on your own. And our last word that we're going to do is 10. So let's elbows up and tap it out. T -a -n. 10. One more time, elbows up. T -a -n. 10. Okay, now I want you to try and write it on your own. I'm gonna count down from 10. And remember, it's okay if you don't finish by the time I get to zero. 10. Okay, my friends, hopefully you were able to get maybe the first sound on there. Let's go ahead and tap it out is our first sound. T makes the t sound. T -a e makes the e sound. T -a -n. n makes the n sound. Awesome job. Let's tap it out to make sure we got it right. T -a Mm, 10. Did we get it right? I think we did. That says 10, and we were trying to tap out the word 10. Awesome job, my friends, working with me today. I will see you in our next video. And if you want, you can ask your moms or dads or older brothers and sisters some words, some three letter words that they could tell you, and you could practice writing some other words at home after this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Boys and girls, my name is Ms. Zhang. I am a kindergarten teacher at Silver Lake here in Federal Way. Um, I am so excited for you to have joined me. Um, let's get into our kindergarten math lesson for today. All right, let's get started with our calendar talk for today. I'm going to share my screen so you can easily see. All right. Um, so if you remember what month we are in, um, I'm going to get my marker. We are in the month of July. 
to a lie. And remember there's a sand castle next to it because um, people may like to go to the beach during these, uh, during July, cause it's nice and warm. All right. So um, who remembers what day yesterday was? Um, yesterday, remember yesterday is the day before today. So um, the day before to, the day before today, that's what we're talking about when we're referring to yesterday. Does anyone remember what number of the month we were on? Let me see, maybe if I circle it, what number is that? It is the number 13. All right, and remember you can always follow um, the number up to see what day of the week it was. So yesterday was Monday, our only day of the week that starts with a capital M. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that because that was yesterday, and let's talk about today. So today, so if July 13th, you see the 13, that was yesterday. What is today? And an easy way to figure that out is our numbers. They just go back, or our days um, within the month of July and every month, they just go up each day we um, pass them. So after 13 comes... 14. Nice job. So today is the 14th or the 14th day of July. All right. And again, if we just follow this number up on our calendar, you will find our day of the week. Remember, we have Sunday, then there's Monday, Tuesday, then there's Wednesday, Thursday, then there's Friday, and then there's Saturday. Days of the week. <laughs> Those are our days of the week. Um, so yes, after Monday comes Tuesday. Nice job. So our full date, if you can say it with me, remember we say the day of the week first, then our month, and then um, the number of the month, or number of the day and the month. <laughs> so it is Tuesday, July 14th. Tuesday, July 14th. We're almost halfway done with July already, which is so wild. All right. So that was our calendar talk for today. We talked about um, what day of the week it is, um, what number um, within our month it is, and what month it is. So hopefully you are familiar with our day of the week and our date for today. All right. All right, boys and girls, before we go into our math lesson, I wanted us to do a little game just to add um, some physical activity into this uh, uh, lesson for today. What we're going to do and what you need to do is you're going to need to stand up. I'm going to go ahead and do that and scoop my chair over and tilt my camera up <laughs> so you can see me. Um, the game is you need to balance on one foot for 20 seconds, okay? So... While you are balancing, you need to be counting out loud with me. I will be counting too. And I will be doing this activity too. So I hope you join me. Um, so your challenge is to not fall. See how long you can stand on one foot without falling. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch feet at 10 seconds. So once we hit 10 seconds, once we count out loud to 10 seconds, we're going to switch to the other foot so we're balancing on both feet. So we get that practice on both feet, okay? All right, so go ahead and stand up, find some space, um, and we're gonna start counting, okay? So ready, lift one foot up, and let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, switch, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice job. You made it all the way to 20. Was that hard or was that easy for you? I wonder. Some people are just a little bit better at balancing than others, um, but it's definitely a skill we can work on. So thanks for following along and participating in our little game. All right, everyone. So 
for our math lesson today, our math activity, we are going to be counting a bunch of things, a bunch of items, and um, there's going to be a number that I want you to be looking for, or not a number, but um, So what we're going to be doing is, if you notice, there's a number at the top of our screen right here, and then all around it is a bunch of various items. And there's different amounts of those items. Um, so we see some books, um, some unicorns, some crayons, I see some scissors, oh, and then if you remember, these are called 10 frames, I see some 10 frames, there's some little kids holding 10 frames, oh, there's even some paint, um, bananas, glue, all these things. All right, so in this activity today, um, this first one, I'm gonna model it for you and first show you. Um, we are looking for um, all of the pictures that show us three objects. So if you remember, our learning target is determining how many are in a group after you count them. So what we're gonna do is count all these different pictures and all these different objects and circle the ones or find the ones that have three in them. So um, let's begin. I'm going to go first. I'm going to do this first and you just follow along with me. Um, there'll be a chance and an opportunity for you to find um, items or objects and circle the ones that you can. You can't really circle it on the screen, I realize, um, but maybe you can um, just know in your head which ones you are and you're going to compare with me as I go through and figure out which ones have three or five or four or however many. All right, so I'm going to get my pen ready to circle some things. Um, all right, so remember you're looking for, I'm looking for three things or groups of three or items that are in a group of three. So I am just going to start counting. I see um, these unicorns, let's start with these. One, two, three, four, five. I see five unicorns. So I know that one, that one's not what we're looking for. That's, we're not looking, we're looking for three. Um, I'm gonna look at these purple books, see what I can find. One, two, three, four. I found four. Again, not what I'm looking for. What about these um, crayons, these purple crayons? One, two, three, four, five. Not what we're looking for. What about, oh, let's look at this 10 frame. This girl right here, let's look at her. In her 10 frame, she has one, two, three. Three dots in her 10 frame. So we found our first three. All right, you know what? I should go ahead. I'm gonna cross out the ones that I've already counted that I know are not three. Let's do these scissors. One, two, three, four. Four, that's not it. I know the last number that I count tells me how many are in that group. So I last the last number I counted was four. So there are four scissors, and that's not what we're looking for as well. I'm not looking for those crowns. Okay, let's try these books. One, or these pink books. One, two, three. I found a group of three. All right, let's keep moving on. One, two, three, four. Sorry, I'm at these red crayons. I found four red crayons. Not what we're looking for. Um, let's do these uh, yellow books. One, two, three, four, five. Last number I counted was five, so that's not three. What about these crayons, these orange crayons? One, two, three. I found three orange crayons. All right, let's try these bananas. I love bananas. One, two, three, four. And the last number I counted was four. That's not what we're looking for. Not four bananas, I want three. All right, let's try these glue. One, two, three. I found three glue bottles. All right, and this girl's doing some more counting. All right, she's got another 10 frames. So let's count those. One, two, three, four, five. Nope. How about these paint palettes? One, two, three. I found a group of three. <laughs> All right, let's do this last 10 frame with the boy holding it up. One, two, three, four. 
I put a cross. Why did I put a, uh, why did I cross that one out? Because there's four, I'm looking for three. All right, so that was all of our objects, I believe. And there's one that you can't see, so I'm not gonna worry about that one. All right, but we found all of the groups of three. So thank you for following along with me and doing that with me. I hope um, you were able to find, count them and figure out which ones were groups of three with me. All right, so now, now it's your turn. So if you notice, there's a new number at the top. Um, and does anyone know what number that is? It is the number five. So the number of, or the group of things or the number of objects you are looking for is five. So I'm gonna give you some time to look through it. And what I want you to do is just um, maybe make a note to yourself or tell someone around you um, which ones are a group of five, okay? So if you notice that, oh, the purple books, that's a group of five. Tell um, your brother or your sister or your aunt or your uncle, or your mom or your dad or whoever is around you, um, which ones have a group of five. Or you can like write them down or something like that. Find some way to keep track of which ones are groups of five. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna be also doing it. And so you can we can check our work at the end and see if we have the same answer. All right, go ahead and do that. All right, did you find some groups of five? I hope you did. Um, if we were in class, I would probably ask you to give me a thumbs up if you um, saw a group of five, but it's a little different when we're just doing it through a computer screen. All right, so I'm gonna change my pen color. I would love a green. All right, so the ones that I found that were a group of five, check your work with me, okay? So I noticed there were five unicorns. Did you see five unicorns or a group of five unicorns? Yeah, awesome. Okay, the next thing I saw is I saw these five purple crayons. All right, so I hope you were able to see those. Um, and then I also saw there's this girl all the way over here, and she's holding up a 10 frame with five in it, um, which is really cool. And I noticed in her 10 frame, the entire top row is filled. And um, I know that the top row, that's five. So that was a quick way for me to figure out that she was holding up five in her 10 frame. All right, and I believe that's all of them. Did you get the same answers as me? I hope you did. Um, and maybe you beat me, like, and maybe you were faster and you're done before me. Um, that would be super cool. All right. So the last one I want us to do, we moved on to our number. What number is that? Four, yeah, so we're on the number four right now. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing again. So go through and look at all the item or the objects and see which ones are groups of four. And so I'll give you some time while you're, um, in order to do that. Again, make a note to yourself or just remember in your head, which ones um, that are a group of four? And we can check your answers at the end. All right, um, hopefully you were able to find some groups of four. As I am going over them, see if you got the same answers as me, see if you got different answers, maybe if you wanna change your answers, all of those things are great. Okay, so I know I'm looking for a number four and I know when I'm counting objects, I'm looking for when the last number I count is four. So let's try. Um, so. When I was looking through them, I saw four purple books. 
Did you see those four purple, purple books? <laughs> All right, nice job. Um, I also saw four red crayons. Red is actually my favorite color, so I was pretty excited to count um, those four red crayons. And then let's see what else. I also saw four scissors. Did you see those four scissors? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I also saw four bananas all the way down here. Who else really likes bananas? I like bananas a decent bit, I would say. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to double check. Oh, and there was one more that I saw a group of four with, and it was in this tin frame. This little boy is holding up a tin frame with four dots in it. All right. Let me know. Did you get the same ones? Did you find the same things as me? Were there some that you, um, is there some that I missed maybe? I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe sometimes teachers make mistakes too. All right. Um, that is our math lesson for today. Um, please um, keep practicing counting objects. Maybe explore around your house if there's a bunch of like a container of things. Maybe try counting how many are in there. Um, that would be super cool and a fun activity that you could do at home whenever you'd like. Um, it was so great um, doing this lesson with you all. Um, our learning target just before I end this, but our learning target was I can determine how many are in a group after counting all the objects. So we did a lot of counting within a group today. So ooh, fine, groups of four, three, and five, you met our learning target today. So congratulations and awesome job today. All right, I hope to see you tomorrow with our same or a different math lesson. Um, yeah, bye everyone. Queridas amigas y amigos, otro nuevo día para aprender. Ayer lunes estuvimos aprendiendo sobre los números y las cantidades. Hoy vamos a continuar, pero con números un poquito más grandes. ¿Están listos? Como todos los días, comenzaremos con nuestro calendario para saber qué día es hoy, en qué mes estamos y qué año es el que estamos viviendo. ¿Están listos? Aquí vamos. Comenzamos entonces, chicas y chicos, con nuestro calendario. Estamos en qué mes? En el mes de julio y en el año 2020, ¿recuerdan? Ayer comenzamos nuestra semana con el día lunes. Si ayer fue día lunes, ¿qué día será hoy? Piensen. Les voy a dar una pista. Comienza con la letra M. Martes, muy bien. Los engañé porque podía ser miércoles. 
día martes. Ayer fue el lunes 13 de julio. Si ayer fue 13, le vamos a agregar un día más. 13 más 1 o podemos contar hacia adelante. 12, 13, 14. Excelente. Hoy es martes 14 de julio, pero además del día y el número del día que corresponde, tenemos que saber nuestro, seguir nuestro patrón. ¿Recuerdan? Pez, cangrejo, delfín. Pez, cangrejo, delfín. ¿Qué nos corresponde ahora entonces? Pez, a ver, veamos. Pez, cangrejo, delfín. Pez, cangrejo, delfín. Pez, cangrejo, delfín. Pez, cangrejo, delfín. Pez. Pez, no. Pez, delfín. Pez, cangrejo. Exactamente, correcto. Nos corresponde el cangrejo. Ahora sí, y hoy decimos, hoy es martes. 14 de julio del año 2020. ¿Y en qué estación dijimos ayer que estábamos en julio? ¿Recuerdan? Playa, lago, ríos. Exactamente, estamos en verano y podemos disfrutar del sol, de ir a jugar al parque y de los días soleados. Y ahora volvemos a lo mismo. ¿Qué es lo que aprendemos esta semana? Matemáticas. Y para nuestra lección necesitan tener papel, o, papel y lápiz o también puede ser un, una pizarrita con un marcador. Okay, les voy a dar unos minutos para que los vayan a buscar. Mientras vamos a contar con los que ya están listos hasta 100 de 10 en 10. ¿Están listos? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 y... ¡Bien! ¡Excelente! ¿Ya volvieron todos? ¡Qué rápidos! Mañana vamos a contar más rápido para que tengan que correr. Bienvenidos a nuestra sexta lección. Hmm, esta palabra parece que puede ser nueva. ¿Qué significa sexta lección? Sexta. Ayer utilizamos la palabra quinta. Hoy vamos a utilizar la palabra sexta. ¿Qué significa Número 6, excelente. Hoy es nuestra lección número 6. Ayer aprendimos a conectar números con sus cantidades, ¿recuerdan? Decíamos, ok, hay tres objetos y lo conectamos con el número 3. Como por ejemplo, podemos ver, conectar objetos con su número, como acá tenemos dos soles y lo conectamos con el número 2. Y también practicamos el decir el nombre de cada número. ¿Recuerdan que los escribíamos también? Uno corresponde con un sol y el dos corresponde con uno, dos soles. Muy bien. Entonces, ya estamos listos para nuestra lección del día de hoy. Nuestra meta de hoy es aprender los números y sus cantidades. Pero ahora vamos a seguir avanzando con números un poco más grandes que de los que vimos ayer. ¿Cómo lo vamos a hacer? Adivinen, vamos a lograrlo cuando sean capaces de lograr objetos y juntarlos con la cantidad correspondiente. Eso quiere decir unirlos con el número que corresponde para llegar a un total. ¿Están listos para trabajar? Aquí vamos con nuestro primer trabajo. Como es verano, yo puse aquí estas pelotitas que usamos para jugar en la playa o en la piscina o en el lago. Que a veces cuando hay mucho viento se vuelan, ¿recuerdan? Y uno tiene que correr detrás. Ok, las vamos a contar. Y para no equivocarnos, le vamos a escribir el número que corresponde a cada una de ellas. La primera, como ya sabemos, una. Escribimos el número uno. Ahora contamos desde la primera. Una, le agrego otra, van a ser dos. Una, dos. La siguiente, ¿cuál va a ser? Una, dos, tres. Entonces, aquí ya llevamos tres. Volvemos atrás. Una, dos, tres, cuatro pelotas. Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Seis. Vamos a poder jugar todo el día a la playa. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Otra vez. Uno, dos, tres, 
4, 5, 6, 7 y 8. ¿Cuántos habrán en total? 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ahora dos dígitos, el 1 y el 0 forman el 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Dos dígitos, el 1 y el 1 forman el 11. Y no solo nos falta una más, veamos. 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Entonces, mi pregunta, niñas y niños, ¿cuántas pelotas de playa hay en total aquí? Quiero que en su papel escriban el número que corresponde al total de todas estas pelotas de playa. Y yo los voy a escribir acá. Les voy a dar unos segundos. ¿Listos? Escriban. Yo voy a sacar la cuenta también. Ok, ¿están listos? Ahora vamos a ver si es el mismo número que pongo yo. Dos dígitos y es el número 12, porque es el último número que conté. Comienzo desde el 1, pero el total es el último número que contamos. ¡Buen trabajo! Ahora dice, une con una línea... Según la cantidad que corresponda, vamos a contar cuántos objetos tenemos y los vamos a ir uniendo con el número que corresponda. Y después vamos a mover nuestros corazones y vamos a ver cómo se escribe este número. A ver cuántos de ustedes pueden escribir el número o por lo menos la primera letra de este número. ¿Listos? Contemos. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. ¿Será este el 11? ¿O este? Exactamente, este es el 11. Hay 11 palas, esas palas que usamos en la playa para hacer castillos de arena. Exacto, 11. ¿Y cómo escribimos el número 11? Agarran su papel y lápiz y escribimos 11. 11. Por lo menos la primera letra, ¿Cómo, ¿cómo se escribe? A ver, a ver si lo hacemos correctamente. Excelente, O-N-C-E, 11. Vamos con el siguiente. Helados, mm, en el verano nos encanta comer helados en la playa, en el parque. Cuenta conmigo, ¿listos? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. 7 y 8. ¿Ya vieron con qué número lo vamos a unir? ¿Con este o con este? ¿El de arriba o el de abajo? El de arriba, el 8. Muy bien. ¿Y cómo escribimos 8? Tomen su papel y lápiz y escriban. O, cho. O, cho. Hmm, ¿Con qué letra comienza? O, cho. Veamos. La primera letra. Ta, 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 la O. ¡Excelente! Así se escribe O, CHO, CH y la O nuevamente. Muy bien. Solo nos queda uno. Contemos. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Ocho nuevamente. ¿Es este? No, nos querían engañar. Es nuevamente el número ocho. ¡Excelente! Hemos terminado. Muy bien. Y ahora nos corresponde nuestra adivinanza del día. Nos merecemos un descanso. ¿Están listos? Voy a leer yo y ustedes me van a escuchar. Y después vamos a leer todos juntos. Este no es un número, es una parte de nuestro cuerpo. ¿Están listos? Escuchen bien. Cuando sonríes, se asoman. Blancos como la nieve, unas cositas que cortan y pueden masticar. Hmm, leamos juntos. 
cuando sonríes, asoman, blancos como la nieve, unas cositas que cortan y pueden masticar. ¿Qué será? ¿Qué será? ¿Ya adivinaron? Voy a sacar la estrella y ahí va a estar nuestra respuesta. ¡Tarararán! ¡Exactamente! ¡Los dientes! Son muy inteligentes. Yo sé que todos adivinaron. ¡Excelente! Ahora, un desafío para terminar. ¿Creen que puedan contar hasta el número 20? Ok, vamos a contar estos quitasoles para ver si llegamos al número 20. ¿Listos? Aquí vamos. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. ¿Qué pasó? Oh, tienen razón, tengo que ir uno por uno, no me puedo saltar números. Tengo que contar y poner a uh, nuestro marcador justo en el número que corresponde. Muy bien, me encanta que estén muy atentos. Otra vez. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, quince, dieciséis, diecisiete, dieciocho, diecinueve, veinte. Excelente. Vamos a escribir los números. ¿Están listos? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Pueden escribirlos conmigo. Siete. 8, 9, 10. Descansemos un poco. Ahí vamos en el 10. Así no nos equivocamos y le ponemos números encima para estar seguros. 11, ahora los, todos los dos dígitos. 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, casi, casi, 18, 19 y finalmente el 20. ¡Ay! 20 quitas sol que usamos en la playa para protegernos del sol. ¿Cuál es el número total entonces? Escríbanlo en su papel y me lo muestran. ¿Será 10 en total? ¿7 en total? ¿16? No, ¿cierto? ¿Cuál es el número total? Es 20, porque es el último número que contamos. ¡Excelente! Ok, chicos, lo han hecho muy, muy bien el día de hoy, pero ya llegó la hora de despedirnos. Vamos a ver qué es lo que hemos aprendido el día de hoy. Vamos a buscar nuestro marcador para leer nuestra pregunta. ¿Qué aprendimos hoy? Recuerden el qué, cuando es una pregunta, el qué lleva acento. Hoy aprendimos a... Contar objetos uno a uno y llegamos hasta el número 20, ¿recuerdan? Poniéndole cada uno el número que corresponde, no nos equivocamos y llegamos a un total. Y unir la cantidad con el número correspondiente. Poníamos ocho objetos y lo uníamos con el número 8. Y recuerden, cada vez que contamos tenemos que llegar y escribir el último número que decimos es el total de lo que estemos contando. Hemos aprendido bastante el día de hoy. Y mañana tendremos otro día de aprendizaje. Así que espero que practiquen, vayan a casa, busquen en su casa algo para contar, pero que sea más grande de lo que contaron ayer. Traten de llegar al 20 o al 30 o al 40. Y si pueden contar hasta 100, sería excelente. Y mañana vamos a seguir con otra lección de matemáticas. Y los espero mañana a la misma hora, ¿OK? Un abrazo grande para todos. 
y excelente trabajo. Adiós. Chao.